Let's catch up with former Foreign Minister Alexander Downer. Joins us live from Adelaide this week. Good to talk to you, uh, Alexander. You're obviously back in Adelaide in time for the gather round, which is a, a smart move. I, um, I want to start off on... <laughs> on, on yes. The... <laughs> I might catch you there next week. Um, I want to start off on the, the Israel situation and in particular what happened in the United Nations this week with the United States surprisingly abstaining from a Security Council vote. Therefore, it got through a, a ceasefire motion in Gaza because the United States stood back. And I was struck by a Wall Street Journal editorial yesterday which said that Joe Biden had said in his State of the Union address that he would not rest, that America would not rest until Israel's hostages were freed. And the Wall Street Journal noted that by abstaining in that vote now, America has undermined that pledge to Israel. Your view? Yeah, uh, I agree with that. I think it's very depressing to see this. It's a non-binding resolution, so the Israelis will ignore it. But nevertheless, once more, it shows a weakening of America's resolve. I mean, of course, a ceasefire would be fine if Hamas agreed to lay down their weapons and release all the hostages. Uh, there would be no more fighting if Hamas did that. The fighting goes on because Hamas keep attacking the Israelis and Jews more generally. Um, and look, um, for as long as America looks weak, as President Biden has made America look weak with the withdrawal of Afghanistan and now the way they have voted on this resolution, uh, for as long as that happens, these people like Hamas will keep attacking our civilization. So I find it very depressing, uh, but the Israelis just have to press on until militarily they've defeated Hamas. Yeah, you certainly... It, it, it seems staggering that anybody, any, any respectable country could utter a word on this without first saying the Hamas must release the hostages. But this weakness we're seeing from Biden, and it's Chris, a weak... Chris, it's a... It's a it... Go on. I was just going to say, Chris, it, 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 it is all about politics. When you look yeah. back on the Michigan primaries, the, there was a sort of whatever it was, I can't remember exactly, but a 20% abstention by Democrats um, who were mainly Muslim Democrats. And uh, uh, obviously the Biden team was stung by this and want to try to win back Muslim votes for the Democrats. Um, but they're driven as much as the Australian government, of course, is driven by politics on this issue. The Australian government wants to uh, ensure that um, Labor votes are not hemorrhaged off to the Greens. And yep. so their policy is entirely driven by that. Should be driven by principle, not by politics. No, exactly. In fact, that's where I was going with that question, just how much of it is, uh, is the hard economics of domestic politics. And, and you've answered that clearly for, for America and Australia now. We'll keep on that case. But while I've got you here this week, I, I wanted to ask you a, a question about domestic issues, and that is the horrible anarchy we're seeing in Alice Springs, the fact that a curfew has now been imposed by the Northern Territory Government. We've got a big police intervention there. And, of course, you've got experience in this because way back when you were in government, the last year of the Howard Government, back in 2007, there was a federal intervention, highly controversial, but great outcomes for a short period. Yet here we are again dealing with similar problems unfolding all over again. We don't seem to have... The, the, the strength to implement any permanent resolutions here? Well, their federal intervention was gradually wound back by the Rudd and Gillard governments who didn't essentially approve of it. But, um, I mean, I think two things here, looking at Alice Springs on the television. Um, first of all, there has to be federal intervention. It's for political reasons that the federal government won't intervene because it would embarrass the Northern Territory Labor government. But it's clearly clear the Northern Territory Police and government don't have any capacity to control the situation. And the federal government has the resources to do that, to send in uh, supplementary Australian federal police officers and the like to help uh, in the policing of Alice Springs. But secondly, this goes back to the communities where these kids are coming from. Um, and the parents of those kids in the communities. I mean, I'm not sure what the parents think when they see their children on TV behaving like this, um, but there has to be much more um, uh, proactive intervention in the remote communities that most of these kids come from. 
in order to try to uh, get to the core of what the problem really is. But unless you address that, uh, then recurrence is inevitable. Yeah, this two-year, two-week curfew is just a temporary situation, and you're absolutely right. You've got to get to some of those core issues long-term for a decent solution. Thanks for joining us, Alexander. Happy Easter.